Hello, everyone, and welcome to the weekly MMA Cycles Market Update. This is Gianni DePoche, and I'm joined with a special guest this week, Kate Silas from ProfitWithThePlanets.com. How are you doing, Kate? Very well, thanks. Thank you for having me on. Very appreciate it. Good, good. So we're really excited to have you here today. You're the first of many guests to come. We want to uh, expose our viewers to other uh, individuals in the financial astrology realm to learn a little bit more about them. So, Kate, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Uh, well, I have been a trader for probably around 12 years. Uh, I have sort of traded lots of different stuff. I start, I'm Australian by my accent, and I sort of started in the, in the ASX, and I actually went through the uh, Fukushima Japanese tsunami and we were sort of all in uranium stocks and it was quite, you know a bit of a debacle and that's to put it mildly I was a really big problem we all lost a lot of money and I was sort of really sort of starting probably went into the trading with a, an interest in astrology and when that happened I decided that I never wanted to get into a situation like where, where something came left of centre like a black swan and I was sort of you know, trying to trade, we all sort of get in and try and day trade and trade. And I was like, okay, if I, you know, I need to work out what I'm doing. I went off to Wall Street, got very lucky, met a mentor. I kind of really learned to trade the US markets really well. I did not really use astrology then. It was a bit of a dirty word to talk about uh, astrology. I actually was told yeah. to keep quiet about the astrology. Yeah. Yeah. And then I kind of came back and look, I'd, you know, gone through the European crash and a couple of crashes and I've been, you know, sitting in the dark in our firm on Wall Street trading. And I sort of, didn't really want to sit and do the whole kind of you know daily candles up and down and i sort of really enjoy trading equities and it's a little bit why i started the astrology for it because i wanted to know when we were, there was news going to come and when they would go up and when they would go down right. same thing you'd, you'd have all these equities one minute they were great and then they just sort of die off and you'd end up you know they're 50 percent down so that's sort of why i put it together as well so sort of one end was not wanting to have this left of center black swan and the other i wanted to know when my equities were going to go up and down sure yeah, which I guess is kind of what everyone, they wouldn't admit, you know, even if they say they don't, everyone wants to know when they're yeah. going down. And so I'm a, probably a little bit different to a lot of the stuff we see these days. You know, social media's got really popular with financial astrology. I'm using what we call IPO astrology, which is a bit like having a birth chart, like a person, the day that these equities float on the market, and then looking at the astrology transits that come to those. Uh, and I'm not sort of using that, and then I use what we call what I, eclipses. Uh, I always say nothing exciting happens without eclipse, and that's where the big stuff's going to happen. You're really going to see, you know, these sort of the, the bigger moves that can take something from you right. know, small to a couple of hundred percent, you know, say Tesla going to the S&P, something like that. Sure. And using the outer planets mostly a lot because, you know, the big planets like Pluto, Jupiter, Uranus, they, they kind of carry the bulk of the weight and do the work. And so you've got the big, bigger kind of moves and then you've got these sort of smaller things. But, and, and that's the stuff that brings news. Like most people, every day they log in, is the news? And we kind of, you know, you can kind of get a bit of a window when we think this might occur. And then, you know, it's also fine looking at companies that you know have kind of good astrology from the get-go that probably have the chance of doing pretty well um so yeah there's a bit of a kind of mixture of how I put it, and then just putting it all together and then using the greater astrology for those sort of left of center events when we might want to come in sort of bigger level when we might want to pull back and stuff yeah. like that um, well that's very so good kate that's very good yeah. because you, you did answer the first question i have so you use ipo astrology I to do. do your market analysis and trading I Very do. Uh, I use it in a different way. As I said, it's looking for when we may see news or a period of momentum. I love it for takeovers. That's one thing I find it's got a special magic for. I actually uh, do a lot of biotechs and stuff. I tend to really like Very that. Nice. Um, and especially, I do trade a lot the ASX because they've got these sort of smaller companies and they have a lot of great biotech. So they, you know, and also a lot of things are much less, you know, not so overvalued as the US. So often you can get these international companies come in and, but it doesn't matter what yeah. you use it for, but takeovers are the special kind of magic. Um, it's, I call it a bit like Cluedo, because once you see some astrology, you start looking for clues, you know, and because it's a bit boring, you know, just looking at, <laughs> transits for 10 years so i kind of wanted to start yeah. doing something yeah. different or, or, or just keeping really chart patterns yeah <laughs> and no, there's nothing else that would be able that, that i could know of anyway apart from ipo astrology where you're going to be able to try and 
something like a big corporate activity, a takeover, yeah. you know, that really big stuff. Right. I mean, I can't imagine anything. Your charts are not going to tell you that unless you are in the know and know someone and rumors, that's it kind of. So, yeah, yeah so it's kind of fun as well. Astrolo financial astrology I've made quite fun for myself. Yeah. Well, just in case anyone who's watching is not aware, IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. It's when a company takes their shares public. So what uh, Kate and other financial astrologers that use IPO charts do is they take the, uh, the time uh, and the day that the stock goes public and use that to uh, analyze the potential direction of a, uh, of a stock. So uh, what I want to do for a moment is share my screen here. I want to talk about what happened in the market this uh past week before I asked Kate a couple more questions because we had the Sun-Neptune conjunction. We're looking at a chart of the S&P 500. We had a very strong uh, week. We started off uh, in a pretty defensive manner on Monday, but then uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was uh, and Friday, it was pretty much straight up. And I think the Sun-Neptune conjunction spoke to a little bit of the uh, market hysteria that we were starting to see in the last couple of weeks, you know, talks of stagflation and economic slowdown are starting to dominate the highlight, uh, the headlines. So I think that was uh, largely a function of the uh, Sun-Neptune conjunction. On Friday here, we had a, a full moon. And over the weekend, we have the Venus-Uranus square aspect. And we know that Venus rules grains and cryptocurrencies. We saw some uh, moves in cryptocurrencies this past week. Uh, and I'll look at Bitcoin in just a moment. But Venus also rules stock markets. And when Uranus is involved, there's a tendency for uh, support and resistance levels, support and or resistance levels to break. So uh, we saw that happen across a few different markets. And another thing that's uh, of note is the fact that Uranus also rules technology stocks. And when we look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ was the only index to make a new low this past week. And we saw the NASDAQ lead the market higher on a percentage basis, which is a which is a good sign. So we'll be keeping an eye on that and we'll be uh, providing updates to our subscribers. Uh, we would encourage you to check out our reports at MMACycles.com. Uh, and I do want to look at Bitcoin real quick uh, because they had a decent week, still trading sideways, generally speaking. But we'll keep an eye out for some wider uh, price moves over the weekend and into early next week, especially with uh, the Venus Uranus uh, square aspect approaching. So that's all that I wanted to look at uh, in terms of charts this week. Uh, Kate, I have a couple other questions for you. Uh, what are some of the upcoming geocosmic signatures that you think could have an impact on markets or the economy? Is at this sort of macro level, kind of really? Yeah, at a macro level, yeah. Um, there's a couple of things. Well, economically, I guess one that's quite interesting is the, what we call the nodal cycle. Uh, if you don't know astrology, the nodes may sound a little bit complicated. They're the lunar nodes of the moon, but they actually are responsible for the real estate cycle. And I have sort of went back. It's not sort of so much my work, but I back tested someone else's work and. When the nodes get into late Aries is often when uh, real estate cycles have started topping. Now they have extended sometimes when the Fed has, cut. it's really interesting the last time is where we are now with all this inflation and the Fed sort of intervene and they can drag it out just a little bit. Now that's going to kind of come maybe around August 2023 or somewhere between like June and and like August. I think we, you know, that's just topping. That's not saying they're going to come down, but you know, we may have this sort of other year, but you know, that's a really important thing for people. And then um, I guess we're going to have Pluto going between Aquarius and Capricorn in that sort of mid-2023 as well. So there's sort of quite a lot going on there. And even just Pluto changing signs is probably quite important as well into that Absolutely. 2023. I'm just looking at my notes here because there's so much that I've got, you know, that I wanted to cover. <laughs> and then getting into 2025, and this is not just me, I mean, this is a lot of financial astrologers would know or have talked about this is probably more in that deflationary cycle, right. which I think is probably something that's really important to people just from our cost of living. I mean, this is a really intense situation that we're in where everything's becoming very unaffordable. So with financial astrology, what we want to do, we go, okay, well, what's going to be a deflationary cycle when that would be like the Saturn-Neptune uh, conjunction because the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction is inflation. And so we've right. got that. And that's actually going to go between 2025 and 2026. They're both going to go what's known as retrograde back and forth. So that's actually a whole year that they're going to be making 
kind of, you know, this Jupiter Neptune that's really clean that's coming in next month. And then we've also got Uranus moving into Gemini in August 2025, which is actually a recession cycle for businesses. So, you know, when we've got a deflation cycle and a recession cycle 2025, I think, you know, because I think everyone wants to know, okay, where do, you know, we're in this right. really strange kind of thing. So I think astrology gives that's really not, I wouldn't say nice and clear because it could be a bit, but a bit of a picture and stuff as well of kind of, and then obviously you've got, you know, the stuff, and I know that Ray uh, covers with the Jupiter Uranus conjunct, you know, and then 2026 comes into its whole yeah. kind of astrology. But I think that's well, a speaking, really important Speaking thing. of nodes, uh, Kate, uh, what, do you, what do you think of the solar eclipse that's happened at the end of uh, April? Uh, and then same day, I believe it's April 30th, we have yeah. Venus having a conjunction with Jupiter. Venus conjunct the eclipse on top of it, you know? That's oh, yeah, cool. right, on top yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, I, I, what's kind of interesting is, I guess there's a, a double thing that's going on there. There is some historical astrology of some past kind of actually, I don't want to use the word crash because I don't think we, you know, we'd like to hope that maybe we've kind of done that part of it, but where we've had these yeah. serious market downturns is four different years and I can't think of them off my head, but it's certainly 1929. And that eclipse is actually in between, it's called, I'm not going to go too much into it midpoints, but you know, that big, that eclipse is, uh, and Uranus is sitting right in that sort of between, I, th I think it was uh, Saturn and Pluto. So there's one thing there about doing what I do using these sort of first trade charts is another name for that I the IPOs you're explaining before. Yeah. A lot of these companies and a lot of the newer stuff will actually have what is called the natal Uranus, which can be really like uh, surprise, up, down. So sure. that eclipse will actually conjunct Uranus, will hit this Uranus. Of, so I don't know, even know what, and then we've got the Jupiter Neptune conjunction, which is kind of this crazy up, down. It could be like, I just think it's a bit hold on to your seat with, with this one, what's yeah. gonna go on. And then, you know, the May eclipse, we have uh, Saturn is squaring our eclipse anyway, which we may have seen. I think all this stuff we've been seeing in the market downturn is Indeed. our eclipse. There's a Indeed. technical thing where it may have activated. So I don't know what to think of that one. Would Uranus <laughs> expect the unexpected? We're probably yeah, that's, that's for sure. Bit, I think. That's for sure. Well, Kate, I, I must say, uh, uh, we, we could talk for a very long time, but we're yeah. running out of time here. So uh, www.profitwiththeplanets.com uh, is where people can find you and your work. Uh, you can find us at www.mmacycles.com. We did have a question from a viewer uh, asking about uh, the Venus Uranus square aspect. I touched on that a little bit. Uh, look for breaks of support or resistance across different markets, especially uh, in technology related uh, stocks and sectors. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that in this week ahead. Uh, and in terms of announcements before we call it a week, uh, Ray Merriman is conducting a gold market update and China market update uh, this evening. And you can uh, purchase that webinar uh, at www.mmacycles.com. Uh, and then on April 1st, Ray will be joining me again here. Uh, but Kate, thank you so much for joining us. We want to have uh, guests like you come on once a month, and we will definitely be having you back, uh, hopefully in the near future. So thanks again for uh, joining. And any last uh, words before we wrap it up here? I just would, I guess that, you know, financial astrology is such an amazing, it's got this amazing power. I always say use it, lose it, don't abuse it. But, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. um, it, it takes a lot for people to get their head around, but it really does have a certain kind of magic to it. It does need a lot of study. I will say Indeed. that it's, it's a serious discipline. So to use it properly, I mean, every, it's all, we all start somewhere and it take, it is quite a long journey, but I call, always call it like the the other indicator on a chart, you know, that you, no one else can see, you know. Right. So it is a really handy tool um, to be able to kind of, you know, I guess have, have an edge or give you some confirmation bias on something, you know, because we're all looking for, sure. for that extra kind of edge. Yeah. All right, Kate. Well, thanks again for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We will see you next week with our uh, following market update. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye.